Hey everybody, this video has been requested quite a bit and it's because I've been posting a bunch of stuff with um, Character Creator 5 going to Blender and some really cool things. I'll post some images, images right now. Cool things that you can do. Um, one of which we discovered that first they look amazing. Um, you can design them on Character Creator. They come with amazing wrinkle maps. Just the best shape keys I've ever seen for a character. It's so handy and something like this would take so long to build so i'm going to show you how to do this and let's jump in shall we okay so obviously to uh start this you need to be having character creator you can get the trial and you can export and link using the trial um you get like 30 exports but I noticed it did crash more often. I don't know why, but as soon as I bought it, it didn't crash. Um, also, keep in mind that when you export, like you have to wait quite a bit. The characters are pretty heavy, and so they take take a bit to send over. So once you have Character Creator installed, you also need the Blender pipeline. Um, yeah, and so it's just gonna be an add-on, and I think I even have yeah, both of these. And once you drag the add-on in, it's going to be, so we're going to be using, there's three different add-ons, and this is the one we're going to use, this is the CC iLink thing. And uh, yeah, once you get it set up, hit connect, and then um, I have Character Creator open. And um, I also have not tested this on the other characters. I've only used the um, CC5 characters. So I'm just going to load one of these characters in. And we're going to do it as fast as we can. But this isn't going to be a character creator tutorial. This is just going to be getting it over. Once you have this uh, Blender thing added in, if you click on this one, it open Blender, I think. And this, I don't remember what that does. But we're just going to open the Blender data link. And we have this confirmation saying, yes, I am connected to your Blender. That is open. Then all you have to do, and this is where it's going to take a second. Please don't crash hit send avatar. We're going to wait a second. It hits here for a second, hits 30 seconds. And I, this is where I wait and I pray a little bit. Okay. So it did it. It went through and now we're going to open blender or we'll try to and watch when I click on blender, it's kind of going to be like frozen for a second. So this is, it did all the exporting stuff. Now it's like, I'm going to bring it over. I promise into uh blender. So just wait and voila, here we are. Come on now. And I'm going to right click and just add a light. This is, that's, this is my favorite lighting tool, by the way. Um, this is it the right click one? I can't remember what it's called. All right, let's render and see what it's looking like out the box. So you can see it looks good, like, but if I zoom in, the subsurface scattering, you know, you have to tweak some of these materials. So I'm going to pull this sucker down. And the first thing is that I just go into the general subsurface scattering right here. And just because I know, I've just found that usually 0 0.4, 0 0.47 was, looked good enough. The next thing that you'd want to do is you'd come in here and you'd want to change uh, to displacement and bump. That's just what I think looks better. Another thing that I've noticed that has helped was turning off. And correct me if I'm totally wrong with this, but um, AO to me is like it's it's something that happens in rendering and not necessarily like on material level i'm always confused why that's on i always turn it off um it just seems like that's like something that naturally happens in a f like using like rendering and lighting it's not something that should be baked into material so my instinct is to always just turn it off um again someone tell me if i'm wrong tell me if i'm right Okay, so it's already looking a little bit better. Um, the eyelashes are very distracting. We could go in and tweak all that, but it's already just, it's looking better. And there's so many things down in here that you can play with. It's absolutely crazy. I could increase the bump scale. We could come in, there's like micro detail stuff, micro detail strength, I could increase that. Um, we could, the original roughness, I always turn this down a little bit. Um, 
Yeah. And I always like to, we can get into lighting too, but I always like to light from one side. The subsurface scattering again still looks a little intense. I'm just going to go 0.4. And here's another cool thing about this. Let me add another light. Boom. Add a light. Backlight. Got to get that separation. I also like to add another light underneath the nose. Let's see if I can get it properly yep down here is where i usually like to get it big make it big and soft okay so i mean it's already looking better uh, my render settings really quick i'm not gonna have it i rendered these out as like 512 in both of these um boom, 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 boom. we're going there and I also remember what I watched a video. I got to change these settings, but I've just learned that 32 across the board apparently is good. <laughs> so now um, we're getting it. It's looking nice. But again, you guys can go down here and explore all of the awesome stuff they added in here. Like you can get like scatter scale for things that don't have masks. You can play with like if her nose and we're like, man, why is her nose still like way too like subsurface scattery. We just find um, no subsurface scatter and we can, I believe, turn it down. Yeah, see, I just basically turned that off uh, or turned it way down because it might be too intense just, but these, they have built-in masks for all of this. So it just, man, it is such a time saver. So this is something else that hopefully doesn't crash, but what you do is um, now we have her in here. I'm going to click Rigify and this is where Every time I think it's going to crash, it hasn't, but you have to wait. So I'm going to click this and then I'll be back. So it worked. I had to turn my camera off because apparently my camera did not like it loading that. But there was one point where, yes, my computer was like a spinning wheel and, you know, it did not like this. Also, when you're done, I always like just unlink it just in case. But now we can come in here. Let's check it out, guys. Let's see if it worked. And... Look at that. Look how fast. And put that up there. You can go right there. And like this is crazy speed for. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Look at this. <laughs> this is where it's fun. Maybe put our eyebrows down. Um, and I also need to check. Let's see if it's displacing now. Let's render. So I don't know if I turned on my... Oh, no, there's some wrinkles happening. Yeah, we got some wrinkles going on. Um, let's see, is it this one? These can go whoop. Um, beep, beep, beep. Blink. Her looking around. Look at that. Look how fast that is. Absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, I'm going to do this and I'm going to hide this. Like this is rendering, which is wild. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is so much fun. <laughs> this is just something you could play with for hours and hours and hours and just have a good time. Let's bring this down. Let's take your mouth, put it back. Yeah, it's cool. This little head tweak thing. I'm going to see if there's wrinkles um, that fold when you're doing this. Isn't that wild? I don't know. Maybe I'm just crazy and I'm like, but this is just so much fun. Anyway, that's all the video is. Hopefully this is helpful. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any more questions. This has all been really fun to experiment with. And hopefully this helps you guys make some really, really cool stuff really quick. Um, that's how I feel empowered. This is awesome to have this tool. 
Um, I did end up paying for a character creator. I'm also not sponsored or anything. Um, I just freaking love doing this. I'm having so much fun and it opens my, like, I feel like I got like another tool that is just so much fun to play with. Anyway, thanks guys.